Welcome to Night Skills. My name is uh, Dr. Richard Hillsden, and today I want to explore with you the concept that the absence of evidence is not the same thing as evidence of absence in healthcare. Doctors and patients alike will oftentimes hear other healthcare providers say there is no evidence for a particular treatment. And I find this term rather disturbing because what the provider is really saying is that there is evidence against the use of that particular treatment. But this concept should be unpacked a little bit more because I agree and I think it's unassailable that providers should not be offering treatments for which no evidence exists. And that falls under two particular principles. First of all, for any medical treatment that has a potential physiological benefit, there is a risk and a potential harm. And that is true of anything that has the possibility or plausibility of an effect. If that treatment has been evaluated and fails to demonstrate a benefit, the only thing that is left for the patient is its associated harm. That is to say, when there is no benefit, all that's left is its harm. And therefore, you are providing a treatment that can only potentially harm a patient. So for that reason, treatments that lack evidence of benefit should be rejected. The second reason is the issue of opportunity cost. That is to say that if you're choosing one treatment against another, if you're choosing a treatment that has no evidence of effect, you may be missing out on the opportunity to treat that condition with the more effective treatment. And the opportunity cost to the patient could be enormous. I'd like to use cancer treatment as an example. You see, for many tumors, the stage at which the cancer is initially treated is its most important prognostic factor. If you choose an alternative treatment that has no effect and the cancer continues to progress, then the treatment may be initiated at a more advanced stage. The patient therefore may lose out an opportunity of curative chemotherapy or surgery. So for that reason, they've missed out on the opportunity for an effective treatment. So those are two reasons why treatments that do not have evidence of effect should be rejected. Now when providers make the statement, there is no evidence, that's relying on two specific issues. The first one is what they may actually be saying is that the evidence for that treatment fails to reach the appropriate standard. And that standard actually is a relative standard. You see, a disease that's very common for which we have good alternative treatments, the standard of evidence for which a new treatment should be made to reach should be very high. So for example, blood pressure treatments are best established with randomized controlled trials using some kind of active control. Whereas a disease that has a very well established outcome, like a high probability of death, that is rare, a lower standard of evidence such as an observational study may be appropriate. And an example that I could think of would be a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm. This is incredibly high mortality. And when deciding whether endovascular treatments would be appropriate, observational studies may be sufficient for that disease entity. The second thing that the doctor may actually be talking about when they're saying there is no evidence, what they may be saying is that there is no statistically significant evidence. You see, there's also a statistical standard that we try to meet when we're evaluating treatments. And that standard is set at 1 in 20. This number is actually somewhat arbitrary and there are different statistical standards. Again, a subject that I would like to discuss more in a future video. But that does not mean to say that a treatment that has failed to demonstrate statistical significance is actually evidence that it does not work. And in fact, we've developed statistical methods to try to solve this problem and one strategy is the systematic review and meta-analysis which tries to pool studies together to see if there actually is a statistically significant signal that's hiding uh, in the evidence. 
So with those issues in mind, what should the healthcare consumer do? Well, first of all, you should choose the best treatment based on the available evidence. So considering all the alternatives available, the one that has the highest standard of evidence, the highest quality of evidence, and the best effect as we can see when we interpret the evidence is the one that should be chosen. That's a bar that will be relative. There are certain diseases and conditions that are so rare, so difficult to study, that in fact, expert opinion and experience may be the highest standard of evidence that could be applied to that particular disease. So keep that relative standard in mind. Remember, if there is no evidence, we should not provide that treatment. And if there's evidence against that treatment, then that would suggest that all that remains is harm. We should keep a relative standard of evidence, however, for those conditions that are rare, difficult to study and for which the outcomes without treatment is uh, serious and is predictable. You've been watching Knife Skills. Please stay tuned to my channel for future discussions on evidence. We'll be exploring things like statistical significance. My journal club series will be exploring how we actually evaluate studies in the future. And keep that in mind as you go out and explore your healthcare experiences.